What's going on guys? Coming at you with another video. The uh, topic today is going to be the kinetic chain. And so a lot of people don't know what the kinetic chain refers to. And essentially that's your, uh, we, we like to think of ourselves as, you know, isolated. You know, all of the different joints are isolated, but if you ever, if you remember uh, when you were a kid, there's like that nursery rhyme or that, you know, this bone is connected to that bone, which is connected to this bone. And, and although that might be like a funny way of thinking it, that's very, very true. So the kinetic chain, um, to give you an example of it, every joint is interconnected in some way. So if you end up hurting your ankle, let's say, on your right foot, most of the time dysfunction um, travels in a zigzag pattern. So let's say your right ankle, you, you sprain it or you hurt it, what happens is your gait is different. You move differently to protect that uh, injury. The body just does that naturally to, to uh, preserve itself. Um, but what will happen is because of that change in gait and that change in uh, muscular recruitment patterns, your brain actually moves differently and it, and it rewires the signals, then your left knee will start to be jacked up. And some of you guys are like, oh, that's so true. After your uh, left knee starts to hurt, then your right hip will start getting messed up. Then you'll probably end up having a little bit of low back pain. Then your left shoulder will hurt. And then you'll probably get some type of clicking or pain in your jaw or headaches. And what happens in modern medicine, right, if you have low back pain, the chiropractor or the doctor or whatever will address that symptom. They'll go to the pain and, and try to figure out what's going on with that. In absence of figuring out what else is wrong within the kinetic chain. Nine times out of 10, I actually think statistically eight times out of 10, uh, pain that you're experiencing in, in either joints, you know, low back pain, knee pain, ankle pain, something like that, comes from a muscular imbalance because all of the joints are interconnected. And so when one joint is off or if one muscle is chronically tight or not active enough the way that it should be, it pulls the joint off of it's instantaneous axis of rotation, right? Our joints are supposed to move a certain way. There's supposed to be a balance within our nervous system and when our, within our muscular system. When that balance is thrown off, that's when pain uh, comes into play. Uh, let's say your quads are too tight. Now it's pulling on your kneecap too hard. It's pulling your kneecap too close to um, the other bones within your knee and that's rubbing the uh, synovial pocket or the um, suprapatella pouch. You have this little pouch that's supposed to have synovial fluid in it. Well, if it's constantly being compressed, now it's not holding as much synovial fluid and now you have knee pain and eventually you're gonna have bone on bone, you might tear a meniscus, you might tear an ACL, something like that will occur just because your quads were too tight. So this is very much so the case when it comes to low back pain. Uh, people think that, oh, my, my low back hurts, it's a low back issue, or I need to mobilize uh, my low back because it's too tight. Most times, it comes from a, a lack of mobility within the hips that your low back starts to hurt. Because just as the pain travels or dysfunction travels in a zigzag pattern, you have, mo you have joints that are supposed to be mobile and joints that are supposed to be stable. So your ankle, if you look at it, is a very mobile joint, right? You're able to move it in a lot of different planes of motion. Your knee, however, so that just the next joint up, is supposed to be stable. It only moves forward and back, one plane of motion. Then you get to your hips, and your hips are supposed to be mobile, right? Lots of different planes of motion. Then you get to your low back, and that is supposed to be stable. So you can kind of see a pattern here, right? So it goes stable, mo or mobile, stable, mobile, stable, and it, it goes back and forth. So then your low back, if your hips are too tight, and that's supposed to be a mobile joint, to give you the uh, 
most range of motion, your low back starts to take, take a lot more load than it should because your hips are too tight. So your low back is supposed to be stable, then up the joints, right, the, up the kinetic chain, you get to your shoulders, and that's a mo very mobile joint, right? Then you go down your arm, your elbow, that's supposed to be stable, your wrists, that's a mobile joint. So you can see that pattern between stable, mobile, stable, mobile. But, like I said, most people's hips are too tight, and that leads to a low back pain, as well as people's abdominals aren't as active as they need to be, their core, and so it pulls the spine in a, a way that it's not supposed to be moved, and therefore causes pain. So what are you supposed to do about this? Essentially, you're supposed to mobilize the hips and activate the core stabilizers. So a huge, uh, I'll give you a couple muscles that are chronically tight in 99% of Americans. Your hamstrings pull on the hips, they pull you into a posterior pelvic tilt, which can cause pain. And your hip flexors cause you into an anterior pelvic tilt. So when these two muscle groups are in balance, you're good to go. But the problem is most people have too tight of hamstrings and too tight of hip flexors. So you have these two different parts of the joints. These muscles are just pulling and tugging on them, causing the pain. So I would say uh, mobilize your hamstrings, foam roll and static stretch your hamstrings, foam roll and static stretch your um, hip flexors, and activate your abdominal muscles and your glutes. Do glute bridges and planks and things like of that nature. Lots of people think that squats help to develop the glutes, which they, they do. There's definitely glute activation when you squat. Uh, but studies have actually come out and shown that during a max effort squat, you're only producing about 70 to 80% of glute activation, whereas a body weight hip thruster, you can activate your glutes up to 95 to 98%. So, glute bridges are huge for your glutes, as well as um, you have four, you have four abdominal muscles, uh, not including, you know, the the deep abdominal wall and um, uh, things of that nature. So the big ones are your rectus abdominis, which is the ab muscles that you can actually see, which are the ab muscles you can actually see, and that's what people tend to uh, develop a lot. But you also have internal obliques and external obliques, and those run kind of diagonally. So rectus abdominis runs up and down. Internal external obliques run diagonally. And then you have a transverse abdominis, and that's the most uh, deep abdominal um, muscle there. And that runs side to side. It's kind of nature's weight belt. And so you need to learn to activate and train all four of your abdominal muscles, not just your rectus abdominis, not just crutches. The uh, actual main function of the, of the abs of the core is to stabilize. It's not to produce movement, it's to protect and stabilize the spine. And so I, I think doing crunches are great as long as they're done correctly, um, but also doing things like uh, planks and anti-rotations and um, you know rotational movements working in all different planes of motion you know up and down side to side as well as resisting movement um, not necessarily producing so give that a shot if you do have low back pain um, mobilize your hips a ton work on stability of your core doing abdominal exercises and glute exercises that helps to align and, and give you good posture and, and give protection there, activating those core muscles. And I think you'll be on a, a good uh, progression to start seeing results in, in your low back pain. Um, I've had, the, I had this thing called osteomyelitis, so it, it set me back a, a lot of years in my training and I've suffered from back, low back pain ever since. It's been about four years now or so. Um, and I notice a big difference of when I'm doing abdominal exercises and glute activation 
uh, versus when I'm not, it, it, it plays a huge, huge thing. And so the, the kinetic chain, if you're not aware of it and if you're not constantly trying to have balance within your muscles, can it can throw everything out of whack. So if you have any other questions in regards to if you have pain in a specific area and you're wondering which muscles to activate and what exercises to do and that sort of thing, hit me up in my DM. Um, like I said in my previous, uh, in my video yesterday, all of these videos are up on YouTube as well as all of my past videos. The link is in my Instagram bio. So go ahead and click there and, and check out my, my YouTube channel. And until next time, I'll uh, talk to you later.